Our next stop from the Windows Server 2016 module would be creating and managing deployment images using Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Woo woo! Jump on the IT train! I wonder how crazy can this channel become over the years? Well, let's wait and see. Hi friends, this is Nick from NLB Solutions and today my video will be on the topic of MDT or Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Of course, there are a lot of other tools that you can use for uh, providing, creating, uh, taking, capturing images, but uh, this one is a native tool that Microsoft recommends using when you are creating and using uh, images for our servers, desktops, and so on. So, uh, for the um, infrastructure for this video, I would need two servers, one is my domain controller and one would be my WDS server and if you don't know WDS stands for Windows Deployment Server so or Windows Deployment Services so um, I won't install Windows Deployment Services on this one so I'll show you a, a bit easier way for you to achieve this but nevertheless we'll need this server to, to create and uh, to install MDT, create and capture our image. Next uh, I will create a uh, blank virtual machine and in there we'll install the reference image and we'll capture the image so we can confirm that uh, we have a reference image that we can deploy to multiple clients and in this image we can of course uh, customize it the way our company needs it to, to be customized. So the first thing uh, that uh, you want to do is you want to download the correct uh, MDT, the correct uh, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit and ADK, which is uh, Windows uh, Assessment and Deployment Kit. I will provide links in the description below so you can download the latest ones. This, uh, the ADK package includes the latest Windows 10 Creators update, so uh, you can capture Windows 10 uh, using the uh, end installing it with the creators update. So I've already pre-downloaded the two packages that I would need and so what I did is uh, I've downloaded the Windows 10 um, 1703 which is the latest creators update so we can test this out. This is an evaluation copy of uh, Windows 10 Enterprise and we'll use this one to build and then capture a reference image for our um, company. So I will start by, let's minimize this, I will start by installing the ADK. So if you double click on the ADK, um, it will ask you where you want to install the application or you can download the application on um, a different computer and then copy the files. So this is the offline version of the ADK. I will just uh, change the path so uh, it can be E, I think it's E, yep can be E and I'm going to click next. I don't want to send anonymous usage data to Microsoft so uh, select no. I will accept the license agreement and in here there are a few things that you want to select. Not all of them are needed from uh, for uh, deploying images with MDT so the things that you will need is the deployment tools, the Windows pre-installation environment or Windows PE, and the user state migration tool or USMT. So I'm going to deselect everything else and you can see that uh, the estimated disk space required will be around 4 gigabytes. So I'm going to click install and select yes. So this process will download the ADK and will install the ADK on my server. In the meantime I'm going to pause the video and continue when the installation is complete. After the installation for the ADK completed, I'm going to close the window and it took around 5-10 minutes depending on your broadband connection. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to install the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit as well. So I'm going to click next, accept the license terms, click next and in here you have the option to select a different location to install the MDT. 
what I noticed during my installations or deployments, if you are creating an offline image afterwards, this image will be created within the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit folder. So if you plan to install on the C partition on a server that does not have enough space, be alarmed for this. In my case, I'm just going to leave the defaults and click Next. I don't want to join the program at this time. Next and install. This should be quite fast. And now that we have installed the MDT, we are good to go. We have our, our reference image ready. Of course, I'm just messing with you. This is just the beginning of a long, long video. So sit back, sit back, grab a popcorn and enjoy. The next thing you want to do probably is if you are going to use your MDT server, it's a good idea to create an Active Directory account and give permissions to the uh, shares that we're going to configure next. So this is going to be more uh, like a service account that will be used to deploy and capture images. But for this testing purposes, I'm just going to stick with my domain admin, admin account. Of course, this is not a good idea looking from a um, security perspective, but for the tutorial, be advised that it's a good idea to create a service account and give uh, the least permissions that you can. So after we installed the MDT, the thing you want to open is the deployment workbench. Click yes. Let's close this window. And in the deployment workbench, I'm going to minimize it because we don't need to see that much from it. In the deployment workbench, you can see that you have two things at the moment, information center and deployment shares. Uh, as right now, you don't will not be able to see any deployment shares yet. So what you want to do is you want to right click and create a new deployment share. You want to select the location for the deployment share. So I want to be under E and let's just change the letter in my case. Please note that this deployment share will require some disk space depending on how many images you have in your environment. So you need to be sure that there is enough space on the partition that you're going to deploy the uh, deployment share. The next thing is next. The share name is going to be hidden. So it's going to be deployment share with a dollar sign on the back and you can access the UNC path using the uh, below link. This will be used on a later state for my configuration. So you will definitely see me using this path. I'm going to leave the default and click next. The deployment chair description, you can rename this if you want. I'm going to leave the default. And in the next one, uh, what I usually do is I remove all the tick boxes because I don't want to be asked all the time. If I want anything to be configured, I will do it myself. The summary, click next. And it's going to start deploying the um, share, the deployment share. So if I go to my MDTE, you will see that I have a folder being created. And currently, I don't have any permissions for it. I'm going to wait for this to finish. Of course, I can see the script if I need to check it and of course it's a PowerShell script. So I'm going to click finish on this window and now if I expand the MDT deployment chair you will see that I have a lot of different options that we're going to use to build, deploy and later capture our image. So the first thing I want to do before I continue is to check the permissions on the deployment chair. You can see that uh, I don't have any permissions at the moment. So I'm going to double click and just give my account permissions to access the share. Of course, this is a good idea now to uh, add any accounts that, um, uh, for example, if you configure a uh, service account in your Active Directory, this is uh, the, the way for you to add the permissions in here. So you can add permissions to this specific account on this specific folder. Of course, what you can do is you can open the sharing settings under the advanced settings permissions. You can um, add share permissions on that account as well. What I'm going to do, I can see that the administrators have full access, but nevertheless, I'm going to add on my account 
full control as well. Because while I'm deploying the image, the image will look into this one, into the deployment chair for instructions. Um, later on, while, while I'm capturing the image, the image will be stored in the deployment chair. So we definitely need to have access on this one. So I'm going to click close. And now you can see um, it's not that hard. We have permissions on the deployment chair. So the next step from the guide would be to start um, adding operating systems to our MDT. Now, if I go to operating systems, you can see that I don't have any at the moment. So what I need to do is I'm going to open my Windows 10 image and I'm going to mount that image. So this is under F at the moment. I'm going to minimize this right click on operating systems and import operating system. What you need to select is the full set of source files. And basically this is going to take this image and copy it on my deployment chair. And the files are going to be used next. So you need to select where your uh, Windows image is and click next. And it's automatically detecting that this is a Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation. And I want to rename the directory so it can be so it can be easier. So I'm going to remove this and just leave Windows 10 Enterprise. You can add different versioning. For example, this is version 1703, for example. But I'm going to leave the default for now and click Next and next again. So this is going to, as I said, going to copy the files from the image and is going to place them in the deployment chair. Now that we have our operating system uh, in, added into our uh, MDT deployment chair, you can click this uh, finish to this window and you can see that uh, I have the name and the description of the of the of the operating system that I have, you can rename, you can delete um, everything from here if you want to. I'm going to just uh, lower the name to Windows 10 Enterprise or ENT 64-bit dot WIM, or I can remove the WIM as well. Let me just remove. And you can see I have the name, description, the platform, the build itself, the OS type and a lot of uh, other stuff. The next thing you want to do or you can do, of course, is if you want any applications to be installed on your reference image while you're deploying the image itself, you um, can add different applications in the application folder. It's pretty much the same as the operating system. So if you have an application, what you can do is you can right click and um, add new application and add the application with source files. So you can um, add different names like publisher, application name, version and so on and so forth. So this application will be saved in here and can be used as a task sequence. You can see the task sequences uh, on a later state while installing, while deploying your uh, image. So I mentioned the task sequences, but if we go on this folder in here, you can see that it's currently empty. So what we need to do is we need to create a task sequence. So this task sequence can be used while deploying the image itself. So if you right click and select a new task sequence, you need to create a task sequence ID. Well, what I usually do is create Windows 10, um, Windows 10 deployment. So the task sequence name would be Windows 10 Enterprise 64 bit. And if you want to add any comments, you can put them in the comment section. So I'm going to click next. And in here from the drop menu, you can see that we have different options. The option that you want to do is for deploying Windows images, you want to create the standard client, client task sequence or just leave the default. On a later state, when we capture this image, we are going to use sysprep and capture, which is going to be a separate task sequence. So I'm going to leave this one, click next. 
From the operating systems you can see that I can select the Windows 10 Enterprise that we've just added. So I'm going to select it and click next. You want here to leave the um, product key and not specify it at this moment. It's always a good idea to um, keep track of your product keys. So if you are deploying a lot of images, depending on your scenario, you want to activate it or if you want, you can activate it on a later state. So I'm going to leave this for now. The full name, I'm going to say it's going to be NLB admin NLB solutions and I'm going to leave the Internet Explorer homepage the default. So click next and in here what I usually do is I when I deploy the first image before I customize it I do not specify an administrator password. What I usually do is I specify an administrator password on a later state or even create a different account from the administrator, different local account and disable the administrator. So it's a better security. So I'm going to click next and you can see that the task sequence summary is so you can verify your settings, click next to this one and the task sequence process completed successfully. So after we have the task sequence in place, we can click finish. And if I right click on the task sequence, I can click properties and in there I can browse, I can check the um, tabs on the top and you can see that uh, I have all of the things that are going to be done while the image is being installed. So it's going to start from the top, it's, got a, it's going to gather uh, local information, it's going to validate everything, it's going to check the settings. So what you can do here is you can see that we have the option to install applications. So we can install multiple applications, we can install a single application. So if you want to install an application and if you added the application under the Applications tab, you can browse through it and they will appear right here. So you can choose different apps that can be deployed or what you can do is you can customize the image after you deploy it. So this is going to be a clean image and then we can customize it and capture the way we want it to be. But if you want things to be um, automated, as automated as possible, you want to work here and see how you can do this. Of course, if you want to install multiple applications, what you can do is you can click Add under General you can see that we have another option to install an application and in here we can install again a single application so you, we can add multiple applications in here we can rename this one so you can see that we have different options uh, for you to configure pre-configure the image that you're going to deploy so I'm going to cancel this one because I don't want anything. I, I want this image to be as clean as possible. And we're going to switch to the uh, MDT deployment uh, rules. So the rules are really important. And if you don't configure the rules correctly, your deployment will most probably fail. I've uh, had a lot of troubles um, working with MDT and deployment rules. So you want to keep the rules as simple as possible, not to be confusing, not to have different rules that are um, giving different options uh, instead of um, giving only, only a single rule that is uh, simple and can be deployed quite simple as well. So you can access the rules if you go to the MDT deployment chair, right click and click properties. In here, you can see that we have a tab named rules. So if you open the rules, you can see that we have different rules at the moment that you can um, say yes or no if you don't want to, to see the different tasks during the installation process. So I strongly recommend for you to check uh, on TechNet to see how to configure the rules properly. But in general, what this means is um, the rules say, are you going to install an operating system? Yes. Are you going to skip the capture? Yes. If I don't want, if I'm going to capture 
the image when my custom image is done I'm going to change this one and you will see I'm going to change this one to no and I'm going to change the skip capture to no as well because I want to um, capture the image and I'm not going to install on your operating system so uh, the options are as I said um, options from the wizard itself you will see the wizard and you will see how the operating system is installed and uh, please note that this is a light touch installation there are different uh, types of uh, deployments and this is a light touch one so you are going to be needed to input some settings but you can configure an answer file and you can configure the rules you can configure the uh, pre-installation environment if you want from here or edit the bootstrap so you can see that uh, my uh, root de deployment share as i said is nlbws01 so um, there are a lot of things that you can configure so they can um, they can help the normal local administrators to install this image on the client machines. So after giving you some information about the rules, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the 86-bit platform supported from the general tab and I'm going to switch on the Windows pre-installation environment and go to the 64-bit um, platform because I want only a light touch ISO image to be created for 64-bit platform. So I'm going to apply and click OK. And uh, we are pretty much done. Um, all, most of the settings are um, already configured. So what you need to do in order for your settings to take effect, you want to right click on the deployment share and click on the update deployment share. So I usually select the optimize the boot image updating process option and I'm going to click next. You can see it's going to force it false, compress it false and clicking next will start creating the uh, light touch ISO image that I'm going to use and uh, create a new virtual machine from it. So if I go to MDT, deployment chair and let me just see so if i go to boot i think it was 64 bit you can see that um, it's pretty much going to start creating the operating systems they are not there at the moment but uh, yep i'm going to leave the because it's still mounting the WIM image so the WIM is being mounted and um, I'm going to leave this wizard to finish it's going to take some time but uh, later we are going to um, I'm going to show you what image do you need to take from this one so now that uh, the process completed successfully what I can do is I'm going to click finish on this one and if I go to my deployment chair under boot I can see now that I have the light touch PE x64 if you remember I've only selected 64 bit because I'm going to install a 64 bit operating system and the image size is around 360 370 megs megabytes so what I want to do with this image what of course you can do is you can pick up this image and add it into your Windows deployment server and deploy remotely images to client machines or client servers uh, but what I'm going to do so we can test this one is I'm going to copy this image and boot a virtual machine from it so we can see what is the process so now I've already booted into my virtual machine and uh, guys I'm really sorry about the uh, image quality this is a pre-installation environment so I'm not able to change the resolution so it can be full HD but uh, I just want to be as uh, descriptive and as detailed as possible so uh, this is a, an important step from the deploying process you can see we have three options to run the deployment wizard to install a new operating system to run the Windows Recover Wizard, exit to command prompt, you can change the keyboard layout and you can configure a static IP address if you don't have a DHCP configured in your network. So I'm going to click on the first option 
and it's going to straight away ask me for my credentials. So I'm going to specify my credentials. Let's see. And I'll be lab domain and click OK. And it's going to connect to my server and to my deployment share. And if you remember, we configured a task sequence for Windows 10 Enterprise 64-bit. So if you have different task sequences, they will be listed here. And you want to select the task sequence that you want to um, use to be uh, done on this virtual machine. So I'm going to select the only one that I have, click Next. And you can see that uh, I have different options and these options are controlled by the rules in the deployment chair. So if I um, did specify that I don't want to change the computer details, I will uh, leave the rule no. If I want to, uh, to specify that I don't want to move any data, I will leave the rule no. But if they were yes or if they are not mentioned, they will appear here in this Windows deployment wizard. So I'm going to leave the default settings. We want this image to be a clean reference image. So after the sysprep, the system preparation, it's not going to, um, either way, it's not going to work because it's going to change the name. So I'm going to leave the default and click next. And uh, using the user migration uh, data, you can migrate data from old profiles. So when you are deploying the custom image and if you are deploying it on an older operating system with, um, for example, Windows 8, uh, with Windows 10, uh, 7, I've experienced some problems and it's not giving me the option to migrate the profiles, but with Windows 8, it works. So when you're deploying the custom image on a Windows 8 machine, you can migrate the user data which is really handy. So I'm going to select not to move anything and click next. Do not restore any data, next. And in here you can select the different um, location and time data. I'm going to leave the default and click next. And we are ready to begin. So I'm going to click begin. And the wizard is going to start deploying my image on this virtual machine. So it's going to format the disk, it's going to contact my deployment chair, and it's going to install the operating system, the Windows 10 operating system on uh, this virtual machine. You can see it's going to take some time to install it, but um, if everything we configured is correct one, this will go to 100% and the image will be successfully deployed. So I'm going to pause right here and continue when the image is almost done. We are almost done installing the image or let's say the wizard is almost done installing the image. I'm sitting back uh, enjoying a small glass of water and I'm waiting for it to finish. So. When um, the, the wizard is done, it's going to restart the virtual machine and it's going to basically boot in our new uh, Windows 10 uh, system that we deployed. So you can see that uh, after uh, one restart, it's um, configuring the settings like we are used to see and it's going to prompt me to provide or it's going to directly uh, log me in with uh, the administrator account to the profile so we can work with it. And now you can see that it's uh, pretty much creating the profile for my administrator user so I'm going to just sit back and enjoy my plain glass of water and wait for the wizard to finish creating my profile. So after the actual um, profile creation is complete, you can see that uh, the wizard will finish up installing any applications if I specified any applications on my Windows deployment server. And uh, you will be presented with the deployment summary where you can expand the details and I don't have any details. But uh, you can see that during the deployment process zero errors and zero warnings were reported. So um, if I click finish to this one, now I have successfully deployed my Windows 10 Enterprise evaluation using Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2013. And uh, this pretty much is uh, part one of the video of how you can deploy 
and part two will concentrate on how you can customize and then capture the image so that you will have a reference image that you can deploy on multiple machines with the software that your company needs. Thank you very much for viewing. This was Nick from NLB Solutions and see you in the next video.